Here we will cover both the basic and recommended system requirements as well as the final version of the game and why it's important. The Operating System This guide and future ones will require Windows 7 or later. CPU The minimum vanilla game requirement is a 2 GHz Intel Pentium 4 or equivalent processor. The recommended minimum for heavy modders is an Intel Core i5-2400. Ideally, you would like to have an i5-6500 or greater, though keep in mind that ideal does not necessarily mean practical for this game. System RAM The minimum vanilla game requirement is 512 megabytes. The recommended minimum for heavy modders is 8 gigabytes. Ideally, since non-game processes will use your RAM while the game is running, the more that you have, the better to assure that you are never lacking. GPU The minimum vanilla game requirement is a card with 128 megabytes of VRAM or more. The recommended minimum for heavy modders is a card with 2 gigabytes of VRAM. And ideally, you would like to have 4 gigabytes of VRAM. Disk Space the minimum requirement is 5 GB of free HDD space. The recommended minimum for modders is 30 GB of free HDD space. And ideally, you would like to have a dedicated SSD for the game to run on and 100 GB of free space on an HDD for mod archive storage. For those who care to view a more in-depth chart regarding chipsets and graphics cards, visit the unofficial Elder Scrolls Pages System Requirements page. This tutorial requires a legit and up-to-date version of Oblivion. 1.2.0416 Outdated or stolen copies are not guaranteed to work properly, if at all, when modding your game later on. To see what version of the game you have, navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Oblivion. Right-click the Oblivion executable, open Properties, open the Details tab, and here you will find the game's product version. Those who have installed Steam outside of the Program Files folders can skip this section altogether. Windows User Account Control has been known to and proven to interfere with certain modding applications downstream. If Steam is installed to one of the Program Files folders, assure to apply the installation location steps in the following section. If Oblivion is already installed and you are searching for a workaround to this issue, view the user account control video linked in the description. Apply the steps within to the Oblivion folder itself. Those who still need help, leave a comment and I will do my best to respond to you. Here we will cover three different ways to install Oblivion, as well as how to avoid the program files folders from the beginning. For those who already own Oblivion via Steam, open Steam. Navigate to your library, right-click Oblivion, select Install. Choose Location for Install. Select the location outside of the Program Files and Program Files 86 folders, but in the original Steam directory if possible to avoid potential issues later. For those yet to purchase Oblivion, go to store.steampowered.com. Search for Oblivion. Select the Game of the Year Edition to acquire all of the DLC. Enter your birth date to continue. Select Add to Cart. Select Purchase for Myself. Sign in if you are already. Complete the purchase. If the install window does not automatically open after your purchase, open the Steam application. Go to your library. Right click Oblivion. Select Install Game. At the install window, choose Location for Install and select the location outside of the Program Files and Program Files 86 folders, but in the original Steam directory if possible to avoid potential issues later. Select Next. If you receive a Terms window, select I Agree. After installation begins, select Finish. Installation from Disk the benefit to having the game disc is that installation will be faster than downloading the game from Steam. Insert the disc into your computer. Push the Windows key plus R to open Run. In the Run window, type the Steam drive letter, Steam, steam.exe, space, dash install, space, the DVD drive letter, colon. Select OK and follow the prompts. 
Here we will establish the basic file paths and any files needed for the game to function. We will also cover and compare all of the game's launcher settings, express some concerns, and establish a good starting point for future and more advanced tweaking. Launch Oblivion through Steam or via the Oblivion Launcher.exe. The Oblivion Launcher is located in Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Oblivion. Simply bringing up the Oblivion menu will establish all registries and any files. Without doing this, certain modding applications will not work. Select Options. If the Detecting Video Hardware window opens, select OK to default all game values based on your system's capabilities. Changing any of the settings from here on out within the launcher window will reset your any files. It is recommended to only use the launcher before modding your game to avoid errors. When you have begun modding, you should edit the any files directly and avoid the launcher altogether. Graphics Adapter automatically displays your GPU. Resolution set to the highest resolution that your monitor can handle. Lower the resolution to trade quality for better performance. Anti-aliasing, directly related to the jagged and crawling lines at the edges of objects. If opting in for AA, select 4 samples. The subtle difference between 4 and 8 is not worth the performance impact unless you have frames to spare. However, if you activate AA from here, the game will not allow you to use HDR screen effects, so I personally disable it. I will show you how to get both AA and HDR screen effects to work together in the any file guide. If using an EMB graphical preset, you also need to set AA to none best performance. Visual quality presets. Choosing the very low, low, medium, high, or ultra high option will implement a preset of values based on the developer's opinion of how each option should be defined. Choosing default will reset all settings to what they were after the detecting video hardware window was accepted. Mode. Windowed. If activated, Oblivion will run in a window on the desktop, as opposed to utilizing the entire screen. This allows you to maintain a sharp in-game image while running the game lower than your monitor's native resolution. Full Screen If activated, Oblivion will utilize your entire screen to view the game. I have Full Screen activated. Vertical Sync if activated, V-Sync will cap your maximum FPS to your monitor's refresh rate to avoid screen tearing. I keep Vertical Sync activated. Screen Effects Determines the type of lighting applied in-game. None provides basic lighting, which makes for an acceptable sky image, but leaves the rest of the world appearing flat and washed out, lacking depth and realism. Bloom Adds a glow to lighting in an attempt to make it appear more realistic. However, this option is not dynamic and it makes the sky glow unnaturally bright. HDR, High Dynamic Range, dynamically alters light based on the way it interacts with various objects and surfaces while taking the player's position into consideration. This option makes the game world much more vivid than without it and it provides a more realistic contrast between light and darkness, more intense than the other two options, but not enough to make the others worth choosing. I have HDR activated. Distant Rendering determines whether or not LOD level of detail will be used in-game for the following. I would suggest leaving all options activated unless you have an outdated machine. Distant Landscape If deactivated, all distant objects, landscape, and environments will be removed and replaced with a thick fog. Think Morrowind. Deactivating this option would be the same as setting the in-game view distance slider to zero. Distant Buildings if deactivated, even with view distance at its max and distant landscape activated, most LOD for buildings and other structures will be completely removed from the game. Distant trees. If deactivated, tree LOD will be removed from the game. When you have finished making your choices, select OK, select Exit. The in-game settings will help you to further adjust your visuals, audio, and game performance. Altering these settings after you have begun modding the any files directly may cause them, or at least specific settings within them, to reset. I strongly recommend to any file modders to only adjust the in-game settings now and avoid them altogether in future scenarios by editing the any files directly. All settings have their corresponding any file settings at the bottom of the screen for your reference. Any settings that affect visibility or quality will provide a trade-off with performance. Gameplay Options Difficulty 
controls the overall difficulty of defending from and doing damage to enemies. Dialogue subtitles toggles the visibility of subtitles for NPCs who are talking directly to you. General subtitles toggles the visibility of subtitles for NPCs who are not directly talking to you. Crosshair toggles the crosshair used when activating and aiming off and on. Save on rest, wait, and travel toggles the autosave functions of the game during these situations off and on. I personally keep this deactivated to avoid sudden frame drops and stutter when they are initiated. If following my example, be sure to manually save often. The video settings. Resolution is the same as the launcher settings resolution option. Set to the highest resolution that your monitor can handle, lower the resolution to trade quality for better performance. Brightness controls how bright or dark the entire image will be. This has no effect on performance whatsoever. Texture Size This determines the overall quality and resolution of all textures used in-game. Raise or lower the texture to trade visual quality for performance. Tree Fade Controls the amount of detail visible on trees into the distance. As you move the slider left, trees will have less leaves and branches. Actor Fade Controls the distance at which characters and creatures can be seen. Item Fade Controls the distance at which items, such as weapons and armor, can be seen. Object Fade Controls the distance at which a range of non-critical world objects, such as rocks, fences, and pathways, are visible. Grass Distance Controls the distance at which grass will fade in and out from view. Those who need FPS will gain a considerable amount when lowering this setting. View Distance Controls the distance to which the player can see. Lowering the slider at all will turn off the distant landscape setting. After lowering, a heavy fog will then come into view and block how far you can see based on the slider's position. I would suggest maxing the slider out unless you have an outdated machine. Distant land, buildings, and trees. These three settings are the same as the ones in the launcher settings, each affecting distant objects in LOD as previously mentioned. Interior Shadows determines the maximum number of possible shadows which are only able to be cast by characters when in interior locations, the maximum being 10. Exterior Shadows determines the maximum number of possible shadows which again are only able to be cast by characters when in exterior locations, the maximum number still being 10. Self Shadows if activated, characters will be able to have shadows cast upon them based on lighting position. This does not affect whether or not the character is able to cast shadows themselves. Due to some visual oddities, I have this deactivated. Shadows on Grass If activated, grass will be able to receive shadows cast by characters. If deactivated, the player and other NPCs will not cast shadows on grass. Tree Canopy Shadows determines whether or not tree canopies will cast shadows. When activated, those who need FPS will have a noticeable performance hit. Shadow Filtering Controls the way in which shadow edges blend with their surroundings as well as their overall resolution. Specular Distance Controls the distance at which specular effects, shininess, and or reflectivity on relatable objects such as swords, shields, and glazed bricks can be seen. HDR Lighting is the same as the HDR screen effect in the launcher options. Bloom lighting is the same as the bloom screen effect in the launcher options. Water detail controls the overall resolution of water surfaces. The difference between high and normal is slight and may not even be noticeable to some. If you are in need of some FPS but still want water detail, set it to normal. Water reflections toggles reflections on water surfaces on and off. Water ripples generates a rippling effect when your character moves through water. Purely personal preference. Some EMB users, depending on the preset, may be informed to turn this setting off. Window Reflections When activated, building windows will provide a blurry reflection of their surrounding environment. A small performance gain is had when deactivated. Blood Decals Determines the amount of blood decals that can be displayed at any given time. Anti-Aliasing is the same as the anti-aliasing adapter setting within the launcher options. The audio settings. Master volume controls the overall well, loudness man. of the entire game, boosting or decreasing all settings within equally. Voice volume 
determines the overall loudness of character voices. I prefer right to have this as loud, city. if not louder, Nobody than other anything. sounds to assure that I can they hear as much of what NPCs are saying as possible. possible. Effect Volume determines the overall loudness of effects such as thunder, battle sounds, and more. Footstep Volume determines the overall volume of footsteps. I turn this down a bit as the player footsteps can become annoying over time when too loud. Music Volume determines the overall loudness of the game music. I generally mute the music due to recording for videos where I add my own and edit other sounds manually. Adjust according to your preference. When you have finished making your adjustments, return to the active game window. Push the tilde key to open the console. Type save any without any spaces and push enter. Doing this will assure that all changes just made within the options menu will be saved directly to your any files. Not doing this may result in your settings being reverted to what they were before you adjusted them after closing the game. If you try to launch Oblivion from either the Oblivion EXE or the Oblivion Launcher.exe and you receive a Steam error message, application load error, you will need to launch the game directly through Steam for it to work. Receiving this error when using a mod manager requires the same resolution. However, you can avoid this issue altogether by installing Oblivion to the original Steam directory and not to an additional Steam library directory as the game seems to not be able to locate the Steam executable otherwise. I've encountered this same issue with Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Installing the aforementioned to the original Steam directory solved this issue for them as well. Installing Oblivion is time-consuming for some. Reinstalling Oblivion from an archive is much faster than downloading the files from Steam. Creating an unmodified backup will allow you to quickly reinstall the game if it is ever deleted. If you uninstall Oblivion, returning the files from the archive that we are going to create to their former locations will reinstall it. While the vanilla backup is not necessary to create, and I don't personally make one, it may benefit those with slow internet speeds. Navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Right-click and copy the Oblivion folder. Paste it to your desktop. Navigate to the Operating System Drive Leather, Users, your user account name, Documents, My Games. Copy the Oblivion folder. Go to the desktop, create a new folder, name it My Games. Paste the Oblivion folder inside of the new My Games folder. In the File Directory bar, navigate to the Operating System Drive Letter, Users, Your User Account, App Data, Local, Oblivion. If you do not have permissions to access your App Data folder, you will have to enable folder permissions. Copy all of the folder's contents. Go to the desktop. Create a new folder. Name it App Data. Within App Data, create another folder. Name it Local. Create a final folder within Local and name it Oblivion. Paste the information just copied into this new Oblivion folder. On your desktop, click and drag the mouse over the three new folders, Oblivion, My Games, App Data. Right click and select Add to Archive. Name the archive Vanilla Oblivion. To completely remove Oblivion and all of its components from your system other than the registry entries which when done manually could cause issues if steps are missed, navigate to Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Right click the Oblivion folder, delete it. Navigate to Users, your user account name, My Documents, My Games. Right-click the Oblivion folder, delete it. Navigate to the Operating System Drive Leather. Users, your user account, App Data, Local. Right-click the Oblivion folder and delete it. This has been a Gamer Poets start to finish tutorial, Oblivion, Installation and Setup. While my installation and setup guides are aimed at all users and not just modders, I generally have a mention or two within about modding because we all know where I'm heading in the next tutorial. Be sure to look out for the Oblivion Any File Guide as well as the Bethany Guide which will be next in this playlist if it hasn't been created already. Both will help you to make anti-aliasing and HDR work together, as well as provide you with a plethora of other in-game settings that can't be accessed otherwise. 
If you have installed Steam inside of the Program Files folders, a video on how to move the Steam folder without having to delete your games, as well as other videos, are linked in the description. A big thank you to Rachel, Dizzy Rogue, who helped with some of the text for this guide a while back. A big thank you to Hi Shut Up of the Step Wiki, Red, and Synthetic for their Mythic Dawn Oblivion Guide. While not yet complete, it has definitely been a great source of information. TweetGuides.com, GForce.com, the unofficial Elder Scrolls pages, and of course, NexusMods.com. Without all of them, this guide would not be as complete as it is either. And to a YouTuber that goes by the name of Zul, X-U-U-L, for having some other great Oblivion guides, many of which I've learned from myself. And finally, thank you to all of you for joining me and spending your time here with me today. As always, I am Michael of Gamer Poets. Thank you for watching.